Right, so update three. First and foremost, alkalinity has actually started dropping down now. It's to about, uh, as of last night, I think it was 10.3 dKH. That's on the HANA checker, dKH checker. Um, so, as I keep saying, we will actually be able to start adding the corals I've got soon. No SPS yet until until we're about the uh, 8.5 mark or so, but if I add a few LPS, I can try and bring that down a little bit quicker, but not enough to shock anything. And um, like I say, I've got auto dosing with the Triton method on at the ready. So as soon as we get to that sort of eight to 8.5 level, knock that on, or even nine, nine DKH alkalinity, and then just steady it right down and then just tweak it down to about 8.5 and then lock it there get all my dosing right and then take a while but then we can start adding SPS realistically you know without sort of sentencing them to death straight away because of the alkalinity flying all over the place as well as being moved and all the rest of it um, you'll have already noticed there's been a pretty big rockscape change um, two main reasons for that is reason one is I do like fish, I'm not just about the corals, I really like colourful fish and stuff and like you can add a couple of, with the, with the rockscape I had you could have had a couple of little tiny things like grammar, assessor or uh, dart fish, things things at that level and they'll be alright I suppose because they'll hide in the gaps of the rocks I had um, but if you wanted anything bigger you know a couple, say more than one ras or whatever or a tang or a fox face or something along that line they're not really going to have anything to hide in which isn't right they need to be able to hide somewhere so these like super tiny aquascapes are all good and that but if you want any big fish it's a bit it's a bit unfair and obviously if you got fish that are sort of prone to stress which stress equals illness when you're not giving them much place to hide then you're asking for trouble really like you're always going to be on the edge of you know the fish is going to get too stressed out and you'll get a some sort of illness turn up um, and then reason number two for the rockscape changes I was kind of thinking how many times I've mentioned SPS and stuff like that and only having I think it was just two plates or whatever it was before but it wasn't a lot you know it's, it's not going to take long as long as I'm successful it wouldn't take long before SPS are sort of fighting and say a years time from now realistically you're only going to have on that amount of space say two or three four maybe comfortably that can grow larger because I like corals to be big if I can so I figured if I add more then obviously there's more space for coral um, like I said before LPS is all going to go on the bottom across the front here SPS on the everywhere else you know um, although saying that you can't really see it on there I'll zoom in towards the end just to show you a bit but on this boulder here right where my finger is now there's a little uh, fairy dust shroom that somehow survived the move. You know, these rocks, they were exposed to freezing cold air. It was like completely snowed over here when these all got moved. You know, it was some of the coldest weather we've had in a long, long time. Um, <laughs> somehow that started growing back. That is another reason for the aquascape change, to be honest with you, because uh, that was on the uh, opposite side of the rock. and. I was asking around with the tank one of the nights and I had the uh, royal blues on and everything else, you know, all the blues right up, so most of you all know that that, that brings up the bioluminescence like really, really high and you can you can see weird colours uh, a long way off. And I noticed a little tiny bit of green from the around the back of the rock and I was looking around and I sort of noticed that, so I wanted to change that just so the damn thing's in view. Super cool coral as well, I mean, really bright, luminous green when the royal blues are on it's, it's super super toxic green looking and I did have about six of them last time there but that's the, that's the survivor so if that survived that will reproduce and it will grow big all the rest of it it look really cool I don't know whether that's going to cause me problems down the line one in with me wanting SPS all over those rocks but cross that bridge when we get to it I suppose I'd rather keep that with it being a survivor to be honest so if anything, it'll be the SPS that'll be moved around that. Probably sounds stupid to a lot of you, but I think it's quite cool that it's managed to survive. Um, back to what I was on about with the aquascape. Anyway, uh, 
one of the points I was going to make is when you've got a very small aquascape and again you wanted stuff like SPS you'll have people that have, and me included say for instance you've got this bit of rock here right in the right in the middle of the flat bit there that's about four or five inches by say probably about seven or eight inches plate rock you could get you'll have people put like five six even seven little frags of SBS on there which is going to look awesome to start with but like I say if you have any success or anything like that a month or so down the line well not a month you know a little bit of time down the line them things it's not going to be overly long before they're all sort of scrapping and stuff and competing for space because that's what they do and yeah, I mean, how much time would it be before that rock is now only two SPS? You could probably have two on there pretty well. Or one really big one, but say two. <laughs> you know, so you're moving things around a lot. So I wanted to increase the amount of space I could have, so increase the amount of SPS I can actually have in it comfortably. You know, minimalizing the amount of scrapping. So, that's another reason for that. Um, another thing is, is the pods in this tank are getting really, really extreme. Every single morning I come down here and they're just plastered all over the glass. Uh, you won't be able to see on here, but on that back weir is um, covered in white specks and they're all pods. Absolutely loads of them in there, which is a good sign. Um, I will add more anyway. Same as uh, phytoplankton, I sort of drip that in there. Um, over time just to keep them all fed up and stuff um, a point I'll make about that actually with uh, a lot of people are going mad about these algae light reactors and stuff like that is they are really really good and that's the prime filtration for this tank and it probably always will be until everything changes um, there's a big difference between the light reactors and an actual refugium and that's microfauna, things like your pods and all stuff like that and worms and stuff. In a refugium, those of you that have had refugiums or have got refugiums, creatures like that which really help a lot in a lot of different ways, feeding fish food for one, crustacean food, you know, critters, and uh, just general maintenance, like you'd be surprised how much they can help clean a system, pods and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I forgot where I was fucking going with that. I lost track of what I was on about then, but the, the point I was trying to make is uh, all that cool stuff that you get with refugiums, you won't get that with the algae light reactor. I've cleaned it out twice as it is. And there probably might, there must be a few pods in there because they're going to get sucked in and stuff like that, but like. Generally speaking, you can't really, I, I, myself, I can't see a lot of pods or anything in there. So like, literally, if you've got Ketamorpha algae in there or whatever to outcompete what's in your display, that's that's pretty much all you're going to have in there. Literally, I can't see shit all else in there. Uh, nothing else in there, sorry. Um, speaking of algae and stuff, you'll notice that a lot of the uh, ghastly hair algae that was in there has now become turf algae. Most of the algae's gone off that back weir altogether. There's still a bit on that one corner. You can probably see this corner down here. Um, but I, that should go over time. Or um, I st I've got no snails in here. Uh, other than Naz Nazareth snails, Nazara snails, whatever. Mud snails, zombie snails, whatever you want to call them. I've got no uh, choke here or... You know, any any normal grazing snails, standard grazing snails, I ain't got none of that in here. I will get some, but well, I'm going to need some, because uh, what I was going to say is now what we've got here is uh, what's known as turf algae. Um, I don't know whether that's like a species in itself or, or, or it's like a hair algae before it's turned into hair algae, if that makes any sense, almost like it mats out and then grows up or whatever I don't really know to be honest with you but either way there's a ton of turf algae in there there's none on these rocks because I've only been in there a week or something like that so um, I just need this stuff to die back a bit now but to be honest with you as far as that stuff goes I think that sort of grazing herbivore fish territory or like snail territory 
crabs don't really make too much of a dent, to be honest, in my opinion. They're cool to have, but they're not they're not gonna clean your old tank getting a load of crabs. Snails will, but crabs not really. They're good if you got something die in there and they'll clean all that up, but they're not really gonna make that much difference to your algae. Um someone else actually before I clock off is um, I mentioned about how that mushroom survived. That's not the only thing that turned out that survived on the rock. Um, when I was doing the aquascape, after I did the aquascape that same night, I realised that there's at least six uh, bristle worms in there. They're only, you know, they're only a couple of inches long, so they're not a big deal really. As long as they don't get massive, I don't really care that they're in there because um, they do do a job. They are detrivals and that they are going to clean stuff. Um, Something that does actually piss me off though is uh, Amtasia and enemies, or glass and enemies, whatever. Um, there's at least two in there. And the weird thing is, is in this tank when it was previously set up, I think it was running about two years or something like that before we bought this house and moved everything. I think for that whole time when I very first put the rock in, there was like two glass and enemies, uh, Amtasias. And I had uh, file fi I'm saying you're eating file fish in there. That at, a f at them. And um, I did also have true peppermints in there. Well, I think a true peppermints in there. Either way, I, I witnessed one of those eat a uh, taser as well. So <sighs> it just amazes me how like the little tiniest polyp or whatever of these. Uh, and says you can just hang on and hang on and hang on and then they'll wait and bide their time and they'll, they'll just turn up one day when there's, there's nothing in there to kill them. Suddenly you've got them. So, it is quite interesting to be honest how they've uh, sort of came about. I always thought I didn't really have them in there. Same as the, same as the bristle worms actually. The whole time this tank was set up last time I only ever saw one in there. The whole time. And now I've got six, at least. So there's probably a lot more. But, yeah, that was kind of interesting. So, yeah, anyway, that's where we are now with the algae. Down to this turf stuff and... That's that's going to be a uh, clean-up crew. Little snails and stuff like that to get rid of that. So, yeah, that's where we are now. Still no water changes. Um, like I already said, dosing, that's no kind of dosing has actually started yet. Other than bacteria that I did start with this tank on. I don't know whether I've mentioned what type of bacteria that was, but it was, uh, I can't remember the strains exactly now, but um, products by uh, ATM. That's the uh, colony, I think that's called. Yeah, colony. And a whole bottle of Dr. Tim's that was actually out of date, I think, or nearly out of date. I can't really remember, but I chucked all that in there anyway. Um, there was nothing in there really for it to go wrong at, so anything I had, it, it went in. <sighs> so that's about the size of it. Um, I'll probably say I'm going to have a load of corals in here for you to have a look at next time, but <laughs> it depends what happens, I suppose. If if uh, if I do anything big with the tank, like I've changed the escape, that's why I'm doing this video, if, if anything changes it's a big change in our video that so um yeah i've not bought anything new nothing um i don't know what will be the next thing i change if anything if everything's fine with you know if the corals and everything go fine probably the next thing that will be added to this tank that's not alive will be a uh, top um I'm debating whether to get a crap looking one for the time being and then uh, get a nice acrylic one made or just go straight to having a nice acrylic one, I don't know. Because um, a lot of other stuff's going on. I'll touch a little bit on that as well actually, because uh, I mentioned it a few times before about the grand tank, the big tank. That's, that's going to be a way off. If anything, I've knocked that a bit further off because um, 
the extension we're having done on the side of the house for me snakes and stuff like that and more fish tanks. Fish tanks were originally going to be all in one loop, one big combined system. And now I'm kind of thinking the big tank that I have in the house, I think I'll have that as a separate system. And uh, the stuff in the extension on its own system, all those tanks in there will be looped together. But I was kind of thinking if there's ever a tragedy, 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 fucking problem happen, then I can uh, try and move things around from one system to the other in, a, in an attempt to save everything. So I can have a backup system if you want. The system that's going to be in the house, that's going to be... That's going to be the... Show-off tank, if you know what I mean. So, like... You know, you get a lot of people giving advice and stuff like that, but... They've got these tanks that they're constantly changing stuff on, and they're like, Oh, I'm going to try this now, and I'm going to try this now, and they've got... A coral, as soon as it's grown this big, it's bleaching and shit's going wrong with it. No one's got anything they can really say. Look at that. That's a full full thing. It's all full of coral. Everything's thriving. I did that myself. Blah, blah, blah. So, the tank that's going to be in the house is going to be... That's going to be a show-off tank. I'm going to put my best corals in there. Stuff like that. Like, I want it. Bragging rights, to be honest with you. It's, it's, I'll, I'm going to try and make everything in there be the best it can be, you know. If I have any really expensive fish, they're going to be in there. Blah, 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 you get the picture. Except for predators. Like I keep saying, the predators are going to be in a... They're going to be in a separate gig on their own. That's not going to be in the house. As much as I like to have uh, big puffers and stuff in the big tank, unfortunately they can't, because... Uh, <laughs> they're eating bastards and they try everything with their mouth, like, you know, well, most fish do, but... They're just really destructive and they're not really reef safe, generally speaking. Some people get lucky, but don't go by them because it's, well, sure risk. So, that's about it, anyway. You could probably see this uh, tube worm down here that I thought was going to die. That's that's basically completely regrown to the size it was before, so that's really awesome how that's stuck to. I would like to get some more of those as well and have them just died around. So, yeah. I'll leave it there. Also, actually, before I go, none of this rock's glued. So that piece here that's totally overhanging literally is such... It's all balanced. So um, a sensible person would probably glue that. <laughs> right then. I'll leave it at that. See you next time.